I'm Alexandra. I serve as the Director of Outreach for the Syrian Policy Institute. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce the chair of this conference, Stephanie Youssef. So if you can just join me in giving a round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Um, before we get started, um, I just wanted to ask real quick, did anybody lose a roll of $100 bills wrapped in a rubber band? <laughs> okay, we found the rubber band. <laughs> So uh, come, come and claim that towards the end. Okay, I did just kind of want to like let you guys know, I mean, the reason for that was just to kind of communicate that this is light, this is informal, this is fun. I want you guys to just really be able to let loose and kind of be able to share. Uh, because the idea behind tonight's welcoming session is, um, you know, for it to be interactive. We kind of want to be able to share use the space to kind of share why, why we're all here. But um, before we get to that point, I did just want to say thank you so much for coming. Uh, it's been so long since we've been able to share space together. Obviously, you guys know um, the last few years have been hard on all of us. And so we're just so excited to be together again. Um, and we do also want to say thank you for being patient with us as we kind of go through some of these hiccups that are happening. Um, naturally, these things do happen. So thanks so much. Um, I'd like to take this time to sort of again, use a space to share why we're all here, what it means to be an Assyrian, what motivates you, what motivated you to come to this conference, what compelled you to visit AssyrianPolicyInstitute.org and register for um, you know, the AMC. Uh, yeah, I mean, really just feel free to share whatever. Uh, but before you do, I do just wanna ask that well, we do encourage you to be open and honest um, to consider the words that you use. We want um, to be respectful and kind and not hurt any feelings. So if you can just be mindful, that would be great. Um, but I did just want to start off with Sargon. Uh, I'd love to nominate you to be the first person to share uh, what it means to be an Assyrian to you, uh, what motivates you to do this work, and um, yeah, whatever else you'd like to share. So I. I we don't have a mic, right? So no, you get, okay. Voice. If you can't hear me, I apologize. Oh. My name's Sargon, I'm from uh, Massachusetts. Um, <laughs> I, um, I grew up in a town, a really small town that was like, uh, the high school I went to was 97% white. Um, I had a name, Sargon, I was born in, in Grafton. And uh, I never really felt like I was like part of that good old boys club, right? Like I'm an Assyrian. I was brought up that way, I had a different name. Um, I had my grandparents lived with me. I, you know, it was uh, a different upbringing than most. You know, my cousins were my best friends, that kind of thing. Uh, and so what it means to be a Syrian to me, like we are part of like, in my opinion, one of the most unique uh, ethnicities, cultures in this world. Uh, rich in history, obviously. Our culture is amazing. And to be part of that is uh, really special. And it's something that each one of us can, should be proud of. So that also taught me a lot about pride and how to be proud about certain things. Rather than run away or be embarrassed, I embraced it wholeheartedly. And um, because I felt like I had a responsibility, a duty, uh, we have maybe, you know, I mean, depending who you ask, maybe two million of us left, maybe three million. Um, in a world of seven billion, we are very special in that in that. Father had, had raised us to be very proud of Syrians, and I am a very proud of Syrian. Uh, I gave my kids, I have three kids, Zaline, Ario, and Ramina. I gave them Assyrian names, so when they get older and they go to that same high school that I went to, uh, I'm going to ask them, what, is, uh, what does Zaline mean? What does Ario mean? What does Ramina mean? So for me, that's what it means to be a Syrian, like just to be proud and to embrace this rich culture, this rich history that we have. So, I don't know. Yeah, no, it does. Thank you so much, Sargon. Um, I think a lot. I think that resonates with a lot of us. Am I right? Um, you know, I like I. I don't know how you guys really want to go about go doing this. You guys are more than welcome to come up here and share. If you'd like to just stand up in your seat and just raise your hand and share, that'd be great. Um, but uh, you know, I'm happy to share sort of what got me in involved in uh, you know Assyrian advocacy work. It really was. Uh, when I visited Iraq, and I didn't go 
because I wanted to go to Iraq, I went for a wedding. My first cousin was getting married and I like kind of had to go. Um, and I went and I really kind of spent most of the week with my family in the house. They didn't like really want us to head, go anywhere. And I was asking them repeatedly throughout the week just to go, to take me somewhere, you know, anywhere near. We were in Duhok and they took me to Sinjar. And we drove around and I was just like mind blown at the scene. Like I was, it was just insane. And so I came back and it was like immediately I hit the ground running. Like, what could I do? How do I get involved? Who do I talk to? Who's involved in this space? Um, and that's kind of like how, you know, it sparked within me. And I think maybe that, it, you know, also resonates with some of you guys. It's, you know, maybe what happened, you know, in 2014 with the rise of ISIS, maybe some of that stuff you know, inspired you guys to get involved. But I'd really love to, you know, to hear everybody's um, story or whoever else is interested in sharing their respective story. I'd love for you guys to come up here and just feel free to share, be honest, be open. Um, Our executive director of the Syrian Policy Institute. Yes. That's dramatic, that's dramatic. Unnecessary. Unnecessary, yes. Every, every speaker. Yeah. Okay, new rule, everyone has to come up to the podium because the camera guys said so. Um, thank you, Stephanie. Just really quickly, since you did mention I am um, the ED of the API, I'd like to take a quick moment to just thank Stephanie for her hard work in chairing this conference and bringing us all together. So thank you, Stephanie. Also want to give a shout out to Jamie Bahura. <laughs> Uh, Jamie was the undisputed MVP of today's Advocacy Day, and Absolutely. it was really hard. It was really hard to get everything together, and she did it, so uh, in a weird hybrid format. Um, I also want to shout out Sargun Hanna for uh, putting together this banner. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I'm sorry. No, he's, he's a great team member as well. <laughs> Um, I also want to shout out Nunes DeMarchi again because it's his birthday. <laughs> and I actually mentioned that because I'm trying to stall to remember the last person I wanted to thank. And I, oh, Stephanie Bazzi. Yeah. Stephanie Martin Photography. <laughs> Amazing work. You're going to be seeing her work uh, on our social. We'll also make those links available directly from her website, but she's incredible. And uh, we really appreciate you, Stephanie, and thank you for being here and sharing your talent with all of us and documenting this incredible experience. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna try and be brief because we definitely wanna get as many people up here as possible. I think when we were talking about um, what this session could look like, we really wanted it to be a space, as Stephanie said, where everyone could just come together and really share why they're here. I mean, most of you, raise your hand if you got on a plane to get here, right? Yeah, so you came here for a reason, right? And we wanna hear what that reason is. We wanna know who is in this room, why you're here, and really have that set the stage and really frame the rest of the weekend for us, right? And so we wanted to kick things off on that note. Um, I'm just gonna be really brief. Uh, for me, uh, there were really two moments that were defining in my life as an activist. The first was uh, February 25th, 2015, a day after my birthday, I'm February 24th. Um, and just given the, uh, the time difference, right, the attack on, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, February 23rd and the 24th. So given um, the time difference between here and Syria, uh, the February 24th, which again is my birthday, is the day that I found out about ISIS um, invading where my family is from, right, in Kabul. And just getting that news was so devastating. And I remember this clear moment uh, where my coworkers, I was at work at the time, came in and surprised me with a birthday cake and I saw it and I just started crying. I couldn't understand why I get to, you know, live in a place where I'm safe, where I have all these opportunities and somebody that's just like me, that could have been me, that should have been me, um, has this, this, this life where now, you know, everything is uprooted. Their, their work, their dreams, their jobs, their families, they're separated. I mean, it was just so hard to process. And, that's when I realized, okay, well, I'm here for a reason. I can be a voice for those people, right? I can be a voice for those um, that are enduring this hardship really in, in all of our names. Um, and so that was number one. And I think that sort of led to me ultimately also making my first trip to um, Iraq or Athra. And, um, you know, I, I don't really speak on 
that experience very much because I found it was actually um, very sad, for lack of a better word. It was very hard to process and um, really shaped, it, it changed my understanding of what it means to be a Syrian. And um, it felt wrong to be able to get on a plane and leave that behind. But what I realized was that there was no leaving it behind, that I carried that pain, that that feeling really with me uh, when I came back, and, and that's really what motivated me to continue, um, you know, looking for ways that um, that I could help elevate those voices uh, that were being marginalized and ignored, and that's ultimately what led to the creation of the API, and you know, brought everyone here uh, four years later. So um, that's me. Um, I think just to make it maybe more efficient, we can start like nominating people, is that okay? But if you really don't wanna be up here, that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe Maureen, because, yeah. Maureen! Yeah. Hi guys, <laughs> um, my name is Maureen Kashaba. Um, I'm from Skokie. Um, when I think about my Syrian identity, um, I think of it as a journey, um, and a journey that I'm still on. Um, being born and raised here, growing up, um, I didn't always feel so connected to my Syrian identity and kind of removed from it. And as I've gotten older and kind of how like Rain talked about in 2014, 2015, experiencing and seeing like what was happening to our people back home, um, just like changed my entire outlook on who I was and um, where my people were and not just, you know, my family, but so far from me um, and kind of geared me on a journey to learning about my history, um, how I can get involved, um, learning the language um, that I kind of ignored for a long time. Um, and that's what led me here to be um, at the conference, to be an API, to um, volunteer in my community back in Skokie, um, and to continue learning my language and connecting with the Syrians and furthering that journey to an identity that I hold closer to me than I ever did before. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where to nominate. Neil. Neil. <laughs> Neil learned the difference between UberX and UberXL today. I did, I did. So I have major public speaking issues, so excuse me ahead of time for the mistakes I may make while speaking. Um, but what I think of, like, like Maureen, I think of a Syrian identity as like sort of a journey. Um, growing up, I really just understood myself as an Iraqi of Christian background. My parents were very Arabized, coming from Mosul and Baghdad and all these other urban areas. So I didn't really understand what it meant to be an Assyrian. But as I grew older and I saw what was occurring in Iraq with 2014, even prior to that, I was very, I understood that people, our people back home were suffering. They were being persecuted every day. More people were being exiled. And living in Michigan, I was seeing more new faces coming to our community. A lot of them not being able to even speak English and started having me like question, like, who are these people? Why do I not understand a lot of them? They're speaking Surat. I don't, just, I don't speak Surat. And it made me really like have a lack of confidence in my own identity. But through this journey, I kind of learned to understand that Assyrians aren't just one sort of shape. We can come in many different ways, from the Church of the East, Chaldean, Syriac, etc. In my case, it was Chaldean Catholic and Syriac Catholic. Um, we can be, as uh, Sargis told me, he goes, some of them are country bumpkins. They're from the, <laughs> you know, more rural areas, while my family was urban. And there's nothing wrong with either. Even if my mom may make jokes about Ted Kip, there's nothing wrong with being from Ted Kip or being from Mosul. Yeah. Yeah. So just saying, we come in many different shapes and forms, and that's what Syrian identity is to me. And I find it very beautiful like that even though we're so different and we come from many different now different countries 
and we've been dispersed all throughout the world, we can all come back to our shared identity as Assyrians. Some of you may know me as the person who made a Syrian archive on yeah. Instagram. So, yep. So I guess I'll just say a little bit about why I began that. Um, I think the, the images that we share, it transmits something fundamental about all of us. Um, a couple of the themes that some of the people were talking about was this sense of like obligation to our community. And I think that these photos, when we share them and we celebrate them, it gives us that capacity to feel Assyrian, right? Not just to say we're Assyrian or to even just speak the language, but to actually feel it. Um, and so the idea with the Assyrian Archive is to transmit that feeling to people who've never felt that before. And I think that with that feeling comes that obligation to help your community in whatever way, shape, or form that may be, whether it's language, music, art, etc. So that's the gist of Assyrian Archive, and yeah, that's it. So thank you. I will nominate Sedegus. For the record, Sedegus also helped put this together. I did. So. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I'd like to clarify, uh, country bumpkin was not used derogatorily. <laughs> It wasn't like a mean thing. We're all country bumpkins, right? Um, what does a Syrian identity mean to me? Hmm. Well, you know, you know, grew up. Uh, I'd hear a lot of stories from my grandparents, my parents, and you know, those are kind of the foundational things, right? That make you who you are, right? So, uh, eventually, when I grew up. Um, I found myself in like positions where I could help my community, elevate our community. You know, I, 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 uh, I love my culture. I love my people. So, I, I guess if we could help each other, kind of grow the culture, grow our, you know, uh, our cultural production, as Sedgon said. Thank you for that. Um, I think it's a beautiful thing. I think we're all capable of doing really cool things, really beautiful things. And I love to see what you all work on. And um, yeah, uh, I love you all. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to nominate. Jamie. She'll kill me, actually. She wants to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, I nominate Jamie. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, most of you have heard me talk today. Um, I'm advocacy coordinator for the Assyrian Policy Institute. Um, I joined sometime last year, I think in August. Uh, for me, I think uh, I obviously, you know, share the sentiments of most of what the people here have said of, of you know the the impacts that our, our current histories have had our recent history I, I should say um, but I think for me coming from Michigan take from that what you will what I'm tilted I thought don't say anything um, so my, my parents have a certain viewpoint so I grew up I think not knowing what a Syrian was until I was probably 20 and so I grew up in a very isolated environment just generally uneducated uh, and not knowing what kind of the world contained and that we had such large numbers of people that were just like us. And so for me, Assyrian Policy Institute, what, what really called me to it was that we have power in numbers and isolating ourselves and dividing ourselves further really does us more harm than good. And so I love API for its mission of, of helping everyone and just being united, as united as we can, no matter our backgrounds, as Neil said, uh, coming all together, you know, no matter what village we're from, what church we're from, uh, and expanding our scope because it's, it's a beautiful thing that you can, you know, find from all corners of the country and the world, people of your background. Uh, I've been to Germany in a random pub in a small town and I met someone who was a Syrian and it was really random and I was still 
early in my journey of discovering that I was a Syrian. Uh, I lived in Dubai and happened to, you know, uh, be at a work event where I was paired with someone from Lebanon and his last name was Jendu and it was Jack Jendu and I, <laughs> everyone knows Jack Jendu, right? So I was like, this is amazing. And so it's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to go to all these corners of the world and find our people there and have that, you know, common denominator with one another. So I love advocating for, for our people and as a whole, I think it's, it's a really beautiful thing. Yeah, so um, we'll take volunteers now because I don't want to keep nominating. Yeah, come on up. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm Joseph Suleiman. I'm from Chicago. I go to Margi Vargas. Um, <laughs> Um, growing up, I think this is similar to what a lot of other Assyrians have experienced. I had a very cynical perspective on what it's like to be an Assyrian. To me, being an Assyrian was like, um, I have to eat food I don't like, I have to go to church every Sunday, I have to be back by 10 o'clock every night, and a lot of that, like, you guys know what I'm talking about, everyone knows what I'm talking about. And um, that kind of like had like drew like a, a self-hating attitude into me. Like I was like, I don't want to be a Syrian. Like I wish I was white or whatever. I wish I had white parents. And that's how I was for a lot of my life. Like I was very like self-loathing. And it wasn't until I visited Iraq that I realized, sorry, Iraq, <laughs> <laughs> that I realized that that's not what being, it, it kind of is, but it's not what being a Syrian is about. Being an Assyrian is about the community. Like, we are so lucky to be born into, like, already, like, a huge family. Like, even if you don't have a big family, you have the Assyrian community, and that's your family. Like, you... <laughs> I can literally meet a stranger in the street and they'll be like, are you a Syrian? And I can have a conversation with them. <laughs> and I don't know, that's really cool to me. And being in Iraq, um, my father's aunt, I didn't really know her until I went, but she died and that was really sad. And there was this huge funeral and like literally the entire like Assyrian community in Duhok, they all like paraded around the city to like mourn the death of this woman. And it was like, it was, an amazing amount of people, like an astonishing amount. Like so many people, and there were like huge waves of people coming into the house to like mourn this person's death. And for like literally two weeks, it was the house was filled with people, and it was all for this one woman. And when I saw that, I was like amazed. I was like, this is unbelievable. Like nothing like this could happen in America, I feel like. Like <laughs> it just doesn't happen. And to me, like, I feel like it's important to get people back in touch with their roots. Cause like, that's what being a Syrian is all about. Like being there for one another, being like part of this big family and helping each other out when we need it. And that's what my view on what being an Assyrian really is. We'll just take volunteers, so raise your hand. Come on up, yes. And then we'll have Renee go after you. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Enlil. I'm from Chicago. And uh, obviously, I'm here today to share with you why, what it means for me to be an Assyrian. Um, what it means to, for me to be an Assyrian is um, growing up in, uh, I, I'm actually, I'm originally from, uh, from Khabur, from the village of uh, Talfeda, which is known for no GI. Um, and uh, growing up in the village, um, I would, you know, walking down the streets, I would hear, uh, you know, the, the old 
you know, the old people, the elders, uh, they would be speaking and they would be speaking about, you know, how they, you know, ran away from, you know, fled the, you know, their homeland, which is Assyria. Um, and, and I always questioned that. I was, you know, how, why, what happened? I mean, what, why did you leave? And I would ask questions, you know, as a kid, I was curious. I always wanted to find out more and more. So, and they would tell me, you know, our, you know, our friends were killed, our family was killed, our, uh, you know, some of them lost their children, some of them lost their brothers and sisters, and, 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 and ever since, it, it stuck in my mind. I mean, that, that always, that, you know, image, I always imagined people running away, and it stuck in my mind, and, and I always questioned why, um, you know, why wouldn't they, as a kid, I, why wouldn't they revenge for something like that? Why wouldn't they go back and, and take back their land and home? And so, but obviously I don't, I found out when I grew, when I got older, I found out that it's not as easy as I thought. Um, so that, you know, that's always kept me um, curious to find out what really it means to be an Assyrian because I wanted to know why am I, you know, why are we in, in foreign countries? Like, for instance, in Syria, um, you know, you go to, to government places and they would speak in Arabic. Um, and that was always, we would call them Nakharai. Um, so, you know, I always, again, questioned that. There are many questions to me. And, and even, you know, here in the United States, obviously, it's a great country and one can feel, you know, a little bit more uh, more free or maybe a lot more free but uh, you know it's still uh, you know this is we, we have you know what it means to be an Assyrian is basically for me is that I have a land that has been that has been occupied you know by the uh, by the occupiers by the so that that always um, has stuck in my mind and that always is my goal is you know to connect with Assyrians and to share these thoughts because some of us, some of us might not know that you know our people went through this um, and you know as I heard from the previous speakers that you know some of them did not find out they were Assyrians until they got older you know in their 20s or you know and, and that's you know that's very sad um, but you know we're happy that we're all here today, and we should uh, definitely uh, try to find out more about how to be a true Assyrian, um, because we are not, you know, we come from Assyria, or our, we originate from Assyria, but the reason why we're here in the United States, I mean, I'm, I'm sure 90% of us are here in the United States and other countries in Europe, you know, in because because we were uh, forced out of our country. Um, we were forced out of our lands, our homes. And that's the reason um, why we need to know why we are Assyrian, is because you know, we, have, we have a land, it's called Assyria. It was Assyria 6,000 years ago, and it's still Assyria today, but it, we have to know that it, it is occupied. Um, it is, our home is not Iraq. It's not Syria, it's not Lebanon, it's not Iran. Our home is Assyria. That's what we should call it, that nothing else. That's what it should be called. Um, and, and the reason I'm here today is to try to uh, pass this information to as many people as possible. And obviously, you're all here, you hear this. And I hope that every one of us will, will just do just a little bit more to find out the truth to find out what Assyria is. Once we do that, I think, uh, you know, we'll all be successful and we'll all, you know, know we're here. Thank you very much. Hello. I'm Renee Antanas. Um, I'm from Orange County. It's next to Los Angeles, uh, California. Um, I'm recently the founder of Assyrian Chaldean Syriac International Youth Organization, Axio. Um, I'm going to talk about more about myself. Um, I 
I have had a very like um, kind of a roller coaster experience of being an Assyrian, right? Um, growing up in a predominantly, like um, many people here have said, um, you know, predominantly white community, um, and especially post 9/11, many of my feelings towards being an Assyrian were kind of, um, kind of, um, and it were, were very negative. And one thing that kind of drove me towards that was not only was I in a place, unlike um, in some places where it's more, where there are more Assyrians in an area, I was kind of more isolated. And one thing that kind of struck me, I would always tell my parents is, if Assyrians, and this is back then, if Assyrians were so great, if it, our people were so strong, how come so many few of us are left? Right? That's a question that always um, struck me. And going back to Seifu, going back to even prior to that, um, going to the in U.S. invasion of Iraq and um, ISIS and those who funded ISIS, um, we see that our population has dwindled. And that used to make me very um, ashamed to be an Assyrian. But what it means to be an Assyrian transcends the name Assyrian. It transcends the borders. We, what Christ says is, he says, when you, one, two of you gather under my name, I am there. When we are all here gathered, Assyria Atra Nakhara, Atra is here. That does not mean, yes, that does not mean we, we don't fight our occupiers. We don't fight for just like uh, many others in, our, uh, in, the middle, in the Middle East. We fight for our land because we were there. Um, but it transcends it because we are a community in Christ. We speak, we have carried the cross of the language that he spoke for so long, which is just, if you look at history, that language is not preserved like that. Language is very, very new in many, um, in many languages. Um, this is a very phenomenal thing we have accomplished, and that and the fact that we have been one of the first people, non-Jewish non people, to convert to Christianity. That is something that transcends names or anything. We are something very unique. And so that makes me realize that no matter how many, how few, um, how few in numbers we are, that doesn't matter. We have community in those who speak, those who may not even use the term Assyrian, who call themselves Arameans or call themselves Syriacs or call themselves Chaldeans, refuse themselves to call themselves Assyrians in any way. We still are in solidarity and in community with them because they speak the language of Christ. They are in community with Christ. So our numbers are only grow, will grow stronger when we recognize that it is not just names. It is, although Assyrian is important because we have a history of Assyria, we have a long history of that that does not take it away. But what is more important is now, is what is now is our people and our indigenous homeland, our people in our diaspora, that we must preserve what is right. And I will conclude with a quote from um, Marv Waterstone. He's a professor in Phoenix, uh, University, of Phoenix University of Arizona. He's, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> He said, um, the struggles that are most certain to be lost are those that are never taken up. The battles that are most certain to be lost are those that are never taken up. We must fight. We must take up those struggles, or else we are certain to lose. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Faith. I'm from the best state in this country, aka Michigan. Uh, loud and proud to Kipnitha. Just saying. <laughs> so um, I feel like a lot of the sentiments already shared are, are pretty pervasive for all of us, and I don't want to be like a broken record and repeat what's already been said, but I do think that like a lot of what Jamie said I resonate with too, because I didn't grow up particularly nationalistic. So uh, for me, culture was food and language and different things like that. And as you like explore more and learn about what the ethnicity is, you realize like, oh, there's all of this extra history that you do need to know. But 
what differentiates me from like if you know Metro Detroit, it's a very immigrant heavy community. So um, like the Albanian community lives in close contact with us, the Polish community, and I'm surrounded by all these other people. And for them, culture is also food and dance and language. And looking at them, their American journey is so different. And you try to juxtapose ours with theirs and you realize it's because they have a country. When they're like performing identity in America, they can perform it as dance and food and things like that because they know, they have the guarantee that that culture is being reproduced in a homeland. And so they don't have this sense of urgency that we all have and I think that defines my di diaspora story is this word urgency because that's what it is. Like you watch these subsequent like displacement instances, whether it's genocide, whether it's like internal displacement and not in like slow genocide, which is if you start to look in the, into the, like the historiosity of it, you realize it's one long genocide with slower periods, faster periods, and it varies in that way. But when you start to like look at it that way, you realize like, yes, I, I'm a member of the American diaspora. I'm like separated from this country. And um, what Rain said like resonated with me a lot, like this, this guilt, which I think is deep in every single one of us of like, I'm here, what differentiates me from who, people who didn't immigrate, like my parents immigrated in the late 70s, and what differentiates me from them, and it's luck, because that's what it amounts to. But given that luck, for me, like what it means, if we're talking about definitions, it's what you can do with it. It's not like, Luck is what defined our path, but it doesn't like define like de define bleh, defined the like specific type of path that we could take, but not the future that we could take on that path. I'm not sure if I'm articulating that as as well as I want to, but it just means that like our roles would look different. So going on Gishru this past March, I, I feel like that um, was really like reinforced for me too because then like I'm meeting people on the ground who are my age, like, you know, early 20s. And it's like, wow, like now, now like I'm, I'm cementing that same sentiment now of like we have different roles, whether in diaspora. But I think I, a lot of it was really sad. Like going through to the was, was pretty heartbreaking for me, um, especially like when you compare it to El Kosh, which is like still has a population of like Syrians there. And that's just not as existent in to but. I, I feel like it also had a necessary amount of revitalization that I think everybody should take this trip because then you you can see on the ground what way that you can most effectively impact the situation, even if you're all the way in diaspora. So I think that long tangential <laughs> explanation was just for me to say that like it looks different. Our stories and trajectories are all different, but the cliche of united under the same banner can all... Uh, Absolutely. You know, yeah. create new definitions. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're going to take like two more volunteers and then uh, we'll probably wrap up. But next. Yeah. Hi, guys. For those who don't know me, I'm Annette David. I'm from Chicago. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time I had to explain why I'm not Syrian and Assyrian. <laughs> I think we'd have a lot of money to help our community. Um, I'm gonna make this one quick. Um, firstly, thank you all the organizers for putting this together. Why I'm here, duh, this agenda is amazing. So thank you for everyone who, who set this up. Um, I too, like everyone else, have a lot of pride. Um, but one of the things that was, I think, lacking in my life was contributing. And I think we can all bring different, different pots of Assyrian food to the plate, to the table, right? <laughs> not all of us are going to be as awesome as Rain. Where are you, Rain? Where'd you go? Where are you? You're awesome. Not, not all of us are going to be as awesome as you or the other people who are politically involved. Thank you so much for being able to do that, because I could not do that. Um, but what I can bring to the table is a technological bridge between our language. And um, for those who don't know, I think a lot of you do know, I'm trying to bring Assyrian onto Google Translate. And I know <laughs> it's very... It is an increasingly difficult task, um, so I've failed my first round of data, just to <laughs> update you all with where I'm at with that project, but I'm really looking forward to the language and preservation section of this. So thank you everyone for putting this together. I'm so proud to be an Assyrian. Um, Sargon, like the, I, I resonated with what you said earlier. It's so much pride, so much happiness, and so much love in this one room. So thank you, everybody.
Hello, everyone. Wow, it's uh, what a blessing it is to be here with all of you. I did not see this day coming for me to be in, in a room of movers and shakers that are so passionate about our nation. I could not, in, in, in my wildest imagination, find myself in a situation like this. So I want to commend all of you for being here because you guys are absolutely amazing. So I grew up in a, in a predominantly American neighborhood and I was kind of like the outcast because I loved Surat music and Arabic music. And I was like firstborn child, boy, you know, huge responsibility of immigrant parents. And uh, I grew up with my grandparents a lot, speaking Surat. I speak Surat better than my siblings do, obviously. <laughs> um, I mean, I go to school with my, uh, with my Walkman, you know, with a cassette player. <laughs> Seriously. You know, and I'm, I'm listening to like, started going, and like, um, to the American kids, I'm like, you know, they're like, what the hell is that? So I was kind of like an outcast, and then I went to high school and met up with other Chaldeans. We have mainly Chaldean identifying Chaldeans, you know, um, West Bloomfield area, if you know like how that works. I'm sorry? There are people too. Yeah, no, to totally, totally, but you, I won't go there. We don't, have, we don't have that kind of time. But, uh, but I didn't fit in with them either because I was kind of like too whitewashed. You know, it was really, really interesting. And you know, like, man, I really want to meet some people that like care about the culture, want to do things, you know, and not have this kind of Guido image <laughs> that, uh, that Chaldeans can kind, of, can kind of be in mission. Straight up, I'm going to call it as, as it is. It, it, it is that way. Um, and I was kind of disturbed. I'm like, we have... The Egyptians get an entire chapter in a history book, so do the Greeks, but the Assyrians and Babylonians get like half a page. Yeah. And I'm like, how the hell, who are making these books? <laughs> um, what it means to be a Syrian, I know I went in like so many different places, but um, uh, my roots is what's so important to me. I was, born, I was identified as a Chaldean for a long time um, because that's how we were, you know, just made, you know, labeled and, and whatnot until I dug really deep into the history and met uh, people like Chris and Rena, um, and uh, we were deepening our knowledge together and connecting with amazing people like you guys. Um, urgency and emergency, I heard so many times from other people's accounts, and, and it couldn't be any more urgent um, to think that if we don't take action now, we might not have a place to call a homeland, is alarming. However, when I'm in a room with so many inspiring people, with so much intelligence in so many different areas, if we can collaborate together and support one another, there's, we can move mountains together. And that's absolutely magical. I know... <clears throat> And Faith, this is not a, you know, we've been, we've been joking around all day. This is not a personal attack, but <clears throat> I, dis I sort of disagree on the whole luck part of it. I don't, I don't think it's luck that we're all here together or that our families had emigrated. I think that we are so much more intelligent and powerful having had uh, been forced out of our country to come here and get degrees and be in safety and have um, the the, pay, the the uh, security of the passports that we have, we're sort of untouchable. And we can do a lot of things from here that we would not have been able to do had we, been, um, had we stayed back home. So I think it's something cosmic has aligned us all here together for whatever reasons with uh, our individual superpowers and we're gonna make something incredible happen. So. Thank you. Hello, okay. Hi everyone, um, my name is Ninwe. First and foremost, I wanna ask if there are other mental health professionals in this room. <gasps> None? Oh my God, I'm so surprised I'm the only one. Okay, <laughs> um, so just to kind of go off of like 
all of us talking about, like I know Annette talked about how she's trying to do Google Translate, and I just think it's very important for all of us to utilize our skills. Um, we see with API um, that those who are interested in politics are trying to get involved with the Assyrian community, and I just think like, just like what the person said before me is that being in America, we have a privilege that we don't have back home, and we need to utilize our privilege as much as we can to kind of help bring forth Assyria. And so Assyria means a lot of things, right? Like um, somebody was saying earlier is that you go to the grocery store, you meet an Assyrian in Dubai, and it's just like, oh my God, hey cousin. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like, that's the way it is. And one thing that I've been hearing a lot is this sort of like shame and guilt of being in America or being in a, a European country or just like in these Western nations. And that comes forth from intergenerational trauma. You're listening to your parents, your grandparents say, oh, our neighbor were killed, our best friends were killed. And even though they never addressed it with a professional or anything, they sip chai and they just talked about death like it was nothing, is absurd. <laughs> um, so we're kind of breaking that barrier. We're kind of in a country where mental health is not being as stigmatized, where we can learn through that and kind of understanding how our bodies react to these things. Why do we react so harshly when somebody says oh you're syrian not a syrian why does our body tense up like what does that mean and so i think we can be the generation that truly understands that like this inter intergenerational trauma is normal but it needs to be broken and also that when people are like oh you're syrian no no, no i'm a syrian but let's not get so angry about it let's not get so tense about it but also let's not be everyone's professor in a syrian education because <laughs> we need to we need to advocate for our people a lot and the fact that i see all of your faces here just makes me so happy that we all care about assyrians so much and just remember that jesus only had 12 disciples and it's one of the most followed religions in the world so we all got to start somewhere <laughs> thank you Um, so you can probably tell by my accent that I'm not American, um, but I've been in Chicago for the last uh, couple of years now. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of oops, familiar faces, which is great, uh, but it's so nice to see so many new faces. Um, so I grew up in London. Um, I didn't grow up with the Syrians. I actually grew up in a very white neighborhood, so I think some of your stories resonates with me. Um, my parents were always very umtenaya. They spoke Assyrian at home with us. Uh, but I guess growing up, I kind of just identified more with an English culture. Didn't really know what it meant to be Assyrian yet. I always loved the music. I went to my cousin's wedding in Chicago, which was the first time I'd seen so many Assyrians, and I loved it. Um, also can relate to having a Walkman with Assyrian music. I think it was David Simon was my first tape. Um, yeah, and I guess 10 years ago is when I started mixing with Assyrians. Uh, my first event was a convention, um, the American Federation, and I was just so excited because I'd always wanted to make Assyrian friends. So what does Assyrian mean to me? Um, I think it is just being all together is just so encouraging. It's when you mix with a lot of different nationalities, different people. I remember growing up, I felt out of place, but I didn't know why. Um, it was the same thing. I was not white enough to be white. I wasn't Assyrian enough for the Assyrians. So it's, it is a difficult line that we walk. Um, I um, went to Atra for the first time in 2018, and that really changed my life. Um, also professionally, I started working um, on documentaries about Assyrians, and I think the most important thing is for us, and I think some of you have already said it, is to contribute in any way that we can. I was just very blessed that I was able to work in an, in an arena where I can speak about Assyrians, uh, pursue the Assyrian cause, and I think if we all just bring our 
special characteristics, our personalities, our expertise, and we try and move the community forward in any way we can. And these kinds of events and having this unity is so important and it's just it just makes my heart glad and I'm sure so many of you feel that way too that whenever you're with Assyrians I think some of you said Assyria is here this is Assyria you know and whatever we can do to try and help the people back home is so important and I'm just in awe of so many of you you do so much amazing work um, and the Policy Institute is just it's wonderful I was so excited to come the first time in 2018 I'm so glad to be here and I hope that we'll just continue working and having this unity with one another. I think it's so important. Like people always say, oh, Atur, Atur. What is Atur? Atur is us. We have to love each other, you know, our community. That's what being a Syrian is. It's not just this entity or idea, it's the people. So we have to love one another, find the unity, um, whether it's through the churches, not allowing tribal instincts, um, denominations to divide us. We're all one people and I'm just so excited for this weekend and I'm glad to be here. Thank you. This is really nerve-wracking but I thought a Canadian should represent. <laughs> Um, so yes, Canada, um, Ontario, Greater Toronto area. Um, but I've had I'll keep this brief. But I've had quite a journey with my Assyrian identity. I was born in Iraq and lived there till about ten years old, and then I moved to Syria for two years. Um, so I have a little bit of my Arabic is really bad, but it's like a mixture of both. <laughs> um, but I and then I moved to Canada. And I sort of, the second I got there, disassociated and was like, Assyrians don't want to be part of that. I want to be Canadian. I want to be white. I want to be all these things. And um, it wasn't until, I want to say like university when I met Imama and Myrna and Sam. I don't know where you are, but it's somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. And that's when I joined AXU, which is the Assyrian Chaldean Syriac Student Union. A mouthful, but it's a great organization. And um, it's, I'm part of it still to this day many years after university, but um, that's what kind of awakened this sense for loving being a Syrian again, and I think it was something I took for granted while I was in Iraq because I was around Assyrians all the time, and what was like, everyone knows what I, well, the Assyrians knew what I was, but, um, and Tilkepe, actually, that's where I'm from, Tilkepe. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, it's my Rekanaya side, which I don't know if anyone, when I say Rekan, no one, yes, okay, hi. Um, okay, but you know. Okay, nice. Um, and Ashita, because I'm also half Ashita. I know, let's talk about to be exact, if anyone also knows. Beautiful. Um, but anyway, I, yes, in university, that's when I really started getting involved. And then four years ago, came here again, or for the first time, sorry, um, to the last convention, um, or conference, sorry. And that's when I met a lot of people here and it's been so nice. I was fangirling a lot because I'd like listened to this Syrian podcast and heard about Savino area. <laughs> and I came up to her and I was like, I love you. Um, it was really funny, but I hope you weren't weirded out by that. But <laughs> um, yeah, it was when I learned about the work of a lot of really, really cool people and especially academics because I love um, academia and education. And it just reignited. We all left and we were like, we need to do something similar in Canada. Like, why isn't there a big community there? Because our numbers are very small compared to here. But uh, it was really, yeah, it was just ignited this fire in all of us. And um, since then, I have learned so much more and gotten involved in a lot of different things. And it's been so, so nice coming back here. Um, but the reason I'm here is actually kind of had to, <laughs> ashamed of this, but force myself to come because I have been living in Montreal, which is a different city. There's like, the census says 200 Assyrians. I have not met any. <laughs> so it's been, for the last year, that's where I've lived um, for my schooling. And it's, um, I think it's affected me a lot not being around a lot of Assyrians. This is the most Assyrians I've seen since last August at a picnic. Um, so I'm really excited and wanted, I, I got super excited in the last week, like getting ready to come to this trip. And I'm really, really, really happy to be here. Um, happy I forced myself. <laughs> um, just being very candid. But yeah, super excited for the talks and to just meet and talk with all of you. And yeah, just that's it. Love being here. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you so much um, to everybody who came up to share. Um, just judge it, just seeing the number of volunteers come up and wanting to share their stories. I think, I think there's like something really cathartic about that release, right? Being able to share and being able to just like have that moment with somebody else and. Um, you know, I think it's sort of this conduit to celebration, right? I think we've all been able, uh, we've all had the opportunity to really speak our parts, and I think the best part about this weekend is the fact that we get to really celebrate being a Syrian, right? And so it's nice to take this moment to reflect, but I think really um, moving forward, we'd, we'd love to just focus on how great it is, right, to be a Syrian, how much fun it is, how positive it is, um, despite how negative it can seem and how sad it can seem. I think there are so many really, really amazing things about being a Syrian, and so, uh, with that, I would like to wrap if there's um, any, you know, whether Rain or Otto would want to come up and say some last words, um, our executive director or our vice chair would like to share something, um, please feel free. But I think we're going to wrap up here um, in just a couple minutes. Rain, uh, sorry. The only other thing I'll say is if you're yeah. taking photos, please post them, tag us, give people FOMO, help, <laughs> help spread the word about what we're doing here and uh, help us just grow this network. I mean, we really, we're so blown away. I mean, just being in this room and, and the fact that like we're going to share this space together. So just if you can help us uh, yeah. spread the word, that'd yes. be great. And uh, yeah, that's all. Yeah. So Thanks so much, guys. See you tomorrow morning. 8 yes. a.m. is breakfast. 9 a.m. sharp, we start. There's no Assyrian time tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> 9 o'clock is starting. Thanks so much, guys.